either his DAT or his mini disc player now, whatever, um, recording everything. Then we get in and review some stuff and play, and we work all afternoon. Um, it's, it's like going to the office, 12 till 6, then we break, and everyone goes off, has a drink, has some dinner, watches TV, goes to the movies, whatever. And, uh, and then around 9 o'clock in the evening, um, Roger and I get back together again, and we review all the work that we've done during the day, and including the jam that's taken place at noon. And then we either work on some lyrics together, or I leave and Roger just spends all night editing this stuff to, to the really interesting bits so that we can review them the next day, stuff that happens spontaneously. And the great thing about Purple is that it's a jamming band. There's a lot of improvisation, and uh, um, you never quite, it's dangerous up there on stage, and it's, we try and keep it the same way in the studio. Um, we're looking at a different process this time. The next album, I'm hoping, is going to be um, a producer involved. So it'll be an extra diet. We feel good enough now to throw ourselves bare to the producer. We normally very jealously guard this, um, what we do in the studio. But I think it's time, about time we had a producer. We're all agreed to that. Give an objective point of view and push us around a little bit. Hmm? Can you name any names? Not right now. Okay. Well, forgive me my, my ignorance. You guys make the album, cut the tracks, everything without a producer. Well, we were, yeah, we had our sort of pet producer in-house, Roger Glover. Um, so he, Roger does it all? Yeah, well, it's a kind of co-thing, you know. We all sort of mooch around. Roger stays later at the studio than everyone else, so he gets credit. <laughs> <coughs> Roger's very methodical and very meticulous, and he's very good in the studio. And uh, the only reason we're not using him this time is because we thought the whole process, that's not just the sound, but also the writing process, for two reasons. One, we thought production takes away too much of his time for, because he's involved in production right from the beginning. And I'd certainly like him back on the lyrical side. Um, not necessarily we write everything together. Sometimes I'll write something entirely on my own and he'll just fool around with a couple of words and say this, that, the other. And sometimes we'll write something entirely together. I'd like to get a little more of Roger's stuff in um, to the writing to balance it up. And for the same reason, um, I think it would be good also to have an objectivity from a producer that we haven't had in a while. Um, Roger's seeing things from the inside out, and we'd like to look at some. We have been self-critical of the records, and um, there are things that could do with improvement. But it won't come with, from within us. It, it needs a, a new, a fresh ear. It just really surprises me that there's not a... Uh, it never has been. It, it, it just seems like such a... It's a garage band, really. We just go in the studio, jam, play, and that's it. Oh, that solo's... Yeah, do another one. Okay. And that's it. What does it make you feel if you're uh, driving by a football field and you hear a band playing Smoke on the Water? It's great. I mean, Smoke on the Water I love. Um, it's, we, we, we're not much for reminiscing. Um, one, we did notice that one of the big penalties you pay for having a good history is that you've got a lot of um, baggage to carry around and people do tend to want to be nostalgic rather than looking to the future. And that's our raison d'etre, is to always um, be expressive and challenge ourselves to something new. Um, so we tend to be sometimes a little dismissive, and we don't mean to be rude, but it's, yeah, yeah, okay. And we still do a lot of those songs in the show, and that's, obviously, we're very proud of our history, but we don't like to dwell on it. But when you hear something, you go, yeah, well, that's nice. But actually, it's great when you're in a car driving past a, <laughs> a situation like you described. But sometimes when you're out for a quiet beer, and uh, you go into a place with a couple of mates and whatever, and somebody spots you in the corner, and then they crank up and they, you know, put <laughs> smoke, highway star, Charlie Turner blah, 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 on the jukebox, and you say, "Oh, jeez, Christ!" And everyone's, "Hey, how are you doing? All right? Yeah, hi, how are you? That's great. That's okay. I mean, I'm eternally grateful for the way my life turned out. So you can never turn around and say, "Well, I wish it wouldn't happen," because I'm, I think it's fabulous. Yeah. I couldn't. I wouldn't swap it for anything. That's, 
I've heard you refer to uh, Deep Purple as a love affair. Is it still that? It's a family affair, really. Yeah. It's, you know, we've, we've had our ups and downs. There's been turmoil. And uh, I think like like any family, really, it, you know, when you scatter, there's a kind of spiritual gravity that draws you all back together again. Well, most of you, anyway. Um, but it's a happy time now. Um, it is a love affair, yeah. Um, sometimes very passionate um, in all the ways that that word can be used. So, As we walked in, there's a lot of, quite a bit of young faces out there. Yeah. 13, 14, 15 year olds. Does that give you a ray of hope for the future? Of, uh... Well, outside of the States, well, we haven't played much in the States, as you know, for, we did, we did a couple of tours. Um, but mostly, I mean, Purple's a very international band. And so in Europe and South America, Japan, Australia, and all of the Eastern Hemisphere, we figure the average age of our audience is around 18 years old. But you tend to get more extremes in America, you tend to get the people who are near our age with their kids. Yeah. Um, and that's great. And I'm grateful for anyone who buys a ticket. I mean, that's, that's fantastic. And as for hope for the future, yeah, the only reason we exist is because we're very optimistic. And that's why we still practice. Um, because we figure that if you keep practicing, you'll be able to do it properly. And Steve Morse practices eight hours a day. And, um, you know, I, I work pretty hard on my lyrical stuff as well. So, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of commitment to it. A lot of these people that come along are actually stunned that there are still people who actually do care about playing their instruments. So, uh, as opposed to, you know, preening themselves and looking wonderful. Right. Uh, do you have anything else, Dan? I know you've got uh, some stuff to prepare, prepare for, but... Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. You're very welcome.